end top is giving us a change in internal energy plus work done. Enthalpy, as I explained in our previous page, basically is defined as the amount of heat or the quantity of heat leaving the system or entering the system that can be measured at constant pressure. This is the this is the term referred or known as enthalpy. It is normally denoted with capital letter H. As you can see here, the capital letter H is equal to U plus PV and it can be expressed in the differential form where the total differential for enthalpy is given as the change of the differential of enthalpy is equal to the differential of internal energy plus PV plus VDQ. For our integrated chain, the state from the, the, the differential form can now be transformed or rewritten in the form given below, where H1 is basically be referred to as U1, which is our internal energy in our first state, plus PV1, that is the pressure times the volume in our first state. And our, in our enthalpy in the second state as H2 will be given as the internal energy U2 minus PV2, where the V2 stands for what? the volume in our second state. This basically gives us our change in enthalpy, which is also regarded or referred to as what? the capital letter H or H2, which is the enthalpy in our second state minus the enthalpy in our first state. Everything here basically gives us the heat change or the amount of heat, the quantity of heat that can be measured. That heat that is leaving the system or coming into the system at constant pressure. That heat change measured at constant pressure is what is regarded as enthalpy. Not constant volume, but constant pressure. We already talked about the sign conventions and how the values of these parameters or these quantities helps us to understand the significance of what this quantity plays in our first law equation. For example, work or W here, whenever it is less than zero or negative, shows us that the system is performing some work on the surrounding or the environment and when w or the work is greater than zero so it's defined as positive it, sho it shows that the surrounding or the environment is doing some work on the system when q which is the the heat the heat entering the system or leaving the system it is actually negative it shows that that particular system has lost some heat to the surrounding and when it is positive it means that the system has absorbed some quantity of heat from its surrounding and as i told you earlier on the first law basically tells us that these two forms of energy works in a simultaneous manner or works in an inverse manner basically in the sense that whenever a work is performed on the system the system loses heat to the surrounding. And if heat is introduced to the system, the system does, does some work or performs some work on the surrounding and vice versa. Now, there are some processes that are measured during the study of heat transfer or heat change. These processes are regarded as thermodynamic processes. The first here is the isothermal process. The isothermal process is 
the thermodynamic process or the study of heat transfer at constant temperature. And we can see here that basically T or the temperature is constant throughout the study of heat transfer or throughout the study of transfer of energy. And whenever the temperature is constant, we normally notice that the change in internal energy for an ideal gas is always equal to zero because no heat is leaving that system and no matter is also leaving that system. We cannot have a situation whereby matter leaves the system and the heat of that system remains constant. Neither do we have a situation whereby heat leaves the system or and that particular temperature remains constant unless that system is already an open system and it has attained equilibrium, thermodynamic equilibrium. This is something we'll talk about in another class. Then we have another thermodynamic process referred to as isobaric process. The isobaric process is a thermodynamic process that is studied under constant pressure. Here we notice that our work is given to us in the form of the expansion work, where the work is equal to minus P dV. We all know that the work, the chemical work that is measured in our lab, depends on two functions or two parallel quantities, the, pro the, the pressure and the volume of the system. Now, if we have a system, if we have a situation whereby the pressure is constant, then the change in pressure becomes what? Zero. And when pressure is constant, we end up with our expansion work. And the expansion work is given as minus P change in V or P dV, minus P dV. Then we have the third thermodynamic process referred to as isochoric process or isochoric process. This process takes place at constant volume. Okay? The condition here is that the volume of the system remains constant throughout the experiment. The quantity or the number of particulates present in that system will not change throughout that particular system, throughout that particular change or that particular process. Here, the work done on that system is zero. And the change in internal energy is normally equal to what the amount of heat leaving that or entering that particular system. And finally, we have the adiabatic Process. The adiabatic process is the, is the type of process or thermodynamic process that is studied during, that is normally looked into during thermodynamic study, whereby the amount of heat leaving the system or coming into the system is actually constant. Here, basically, the no amount of heat is actually allowed within the system or leaving the system. Let me correct myself. No heat is entering the system or leaving the system. So Q here is actually equal to zero, basically. Not constant, but equal to zero. So there is no heat flow. And we refer to this as an adiabatic process. Here, the internal energy, the change in internal energy, the consequence for this is that it makes the change in internal energy to be equal to what the work done in that particular system. Now, we have a summary of our thermodynamic process. And by looking at the summary of our thermodynamic process, you notice that in our isobaric process here, where we are having a constant pressure process, where we have the, the expansion work, you notice that definitely there is going to be a change in volume. Yeah, our final volume minus our initial volume might actually be what? Negative. And it might end up cancelling out the negative sign that appears before pressure. And at the end of the day, we might notice a value, having our value in our work done being positive. But if the work done is negative at the end of the day, basically this shows that the system is performing some work on the surrounding. And if the work done is positive at the end of the day, it shows that the surrounding is performing some work on that particular system. So, when we look at the final mathematical statement for the first law of thermodynamics. How does it affect 
the change in the internal energy. You notice that we can substitute the value of the work done into the overall expression for the first law of thermodynamics, which basically states that the change in internal energy is equal to Q minus PdV. But in this case, since our change in volume has been given to us as Vf, which is our final volume, minus Vi, which is our initial volume, then we can interchange that equation and we have our new expression for what? An isobaric process. So basically what this is saying is if you want to calculate the change in internal energy of the system at constant pressure, we are going to basically substitute the work done in that particular expression for our first law of thermodynamics with minus PdV. Okay? Now for the isochoric process, remember the isochoric process is a thermodynamic process whereby the volume remains constant throughout and the consequence for this is that when the volume is constant then pdv becomes zero and if pdv is equal to zero the change in internal energy which is q plus work done becomes what q plus zero or q minus zero depending on what work you are using because not whatever work you substitute there the work is actually going to be equal to zero at constant volume and what this basically means in turn is that every time you carry out any calculation any thermodynamic calculation whereby that particular experiment is done at constant volume always remember i state always remember that your internal energy the change in internal energy is always equal to what your heat change in that particular system because the work done will be equal to zero then we have our isothermal process in our isothermal process the work done is now transformed in order to bring in our temperature since our temperature is constant it's not changing over time we are going to have a value for our temperature here and for an ideal gas the work done is if given as nrt lean vi over vn where the VI, as I stated, is equal to what? The initial volume and VF is our final volume. And the lean there is our natural log. Please don't forget, it's our natural log. And we can substitute this expression for our work into the overall expression to give us our change in U to be equal to Q plus NRT lean VI over VF. Now, remember from our previous statement. At constant temperature, there is no transfer of the, the, the basically no temperature change. Okay, temperature is kind of like constant throughout. And here, the internal energy of that particular system for an ideal gas is normally equal to what? zero. Please don't forget that. And when it's equal to zero, it basically means that the work done on that system will be equal to what? The negative value for what? Our heat that particular change in that particular system which means that in that for any isothermal system the amount of work done on the system is always equal to the amount of heat that is released by the system exactly the same quantity of energy that is measured between the two of them now in our adiabatic process we notice that there is no heat flow and when there is no heat flow q in our overall first law or the first law of thermodynamic mathematical expression becomes zero and the work done is equal to what? 3 over 2 mrt where our small letter n stands for the number of moles and our r our molar gas constant here temperature is going to be changing and since there is a change in temperature the temperature changes from tf and from Ti to Tf. So basically we are going to have our final temperature which is Tf and our initial temperature as Ti. And we can replace this into our final expression to give us our change in internal energy to be equal to what? Plus 3 over 2 Mr into bracket Tf minus Ti to give us our overall expression for the first law of thermodynamics under adiabatic conditions or on the condition whereby no heat flow is leaving or entering the system.